As you enter Victor's Victor home, you'll find a mirror, and on the other side, you'll find a bed outside. So bread driving is one of the basic things that I feel like every young person should have as a skill. There is cross inspiration happening, just like cross pollination. I'm very grateful for you guys. You inspire me to do more and bring you more. The 12th village, ladies and gentlemen, we are at Ayani, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm so excited. Two more villages to go. This village is considered the central business district of Kibera. I have my buddy here. The guy who was inspiring me to be a lyricist. <laughs> He's also down in our Christmas videos. Morocco Kalahari. Morocco Kalahari has been the Once big... again, anytime we're there. <laughs> so what it's you Victor's with Victor. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys the story of this guy. This is like the first generation, second generation of first generation. Second rap generation. Second rap generation rap rappers in Kibra. Tell forgetting. I keep forgetting in Kibra. Who do I keep forgetting? The legendary Moro. This is one of the biggest storytellers in Kibera. I tried telling his story, but he dodged me. He's waiting for me to be big. Uh, uh, so big. that he can do the story. So we grew up with this guy in the slum. Broco Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, the, continue, sorry. So there have been rumors of like a supernatural, you know, uh -huh. encounters like with genies uh -huh. and uh, spirits from the Nubian ancestral land. Uh -huh. But they have not been proven. Uh -huh. but they're still spooky it's like one of the things that identifies kibera is this this mosque bro it's already your network mm. find new networks make the spider web a grapevine mm. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen welcome to another episode of big days with victor as you enter big days with victor home you'll find a mirror and on the other side you'll find a bed outside Ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, I want to be very grateful. I want to express my deepest gratitude for the family of Victor Street Victors for your continued support. You guys can hear. So, that's John. Hey, John, John, John. That's John making noise on the gear. So, he's doing his test drive. Uh, Vin also will be using this car, as you guys remember. I was to give him, but now it's a family car for the three of us. So, Vin and Lenny, uh, to share with John. Check out Share with John on uh, the description. Uh, he's also one of the YouTubers, my baby, Vin and Lenny's grandchildren. And so, talking about that, ladies and gentlemen. John, Nani amesema ukunje hivyo ingia. Ingia. So this guy is making noise on the street. So John has been doing his morning test. Uh Vin is still John has his driving license now. And Vinny is working on his driving license, but soon we'll be seeing Vin uh, using this car to train. I was the kata. I was the kata. He's saying that the car is not moving, it's him who is not moving, and that's what I'm telling him. So that was John doing the drive, you broke the gear. John, what did you do? Uh, I I don't know what happened because I reversed. <laughs> then while well, I was uh, when I was going I was going to move forward. Then I tried to move to move to gear one, but the gear was not responding. You forced it. <laughs> <laughs> so you break, not, uh, check out share with John on the description. Uh, but now you have a driving license. Why are you struggling with driving? <laughs> I think I'm still like the incident that uh, happened the previous. The previous one that's i think i'm traumatized with that so what, I'm still panicking. what was the incident check out his video on the incident tell our people briefly what was the incident <laughs> i think I've, I've already briefed them on my video i think i'll upload it today ah okay yeah, it, but uh, just oh you're you're gonna you're gonna yeah, upload it today yeah i'm gonna upload it today ah uh, yeah so talking of inspiration john among many others so john and vin are uh learning their driving techniques and they are mastering their driving. Ah, oh, look at them. Oh, sunbathed. 
Victor should Victor. So talking of inspiration, um, first and foremost, before I talk inspiration, well, let me just connect it to the inspiration. Yeah, I'm really proud of John. I'm also proud of Vin. And uh, yeah, the driving is getting better and better each and every day. So driving is one of the basic things that I feel like every young person should have as a skill. Uh, because of so many reasons but one of them is um like i said in kenya you have to be a child of all jacks and uh, so if you don't have a job you can probably be someone's driver or be a matatu driver matatu culture if you guys already know um the video that i posted yesterday i posted a little bit about the matatu culture but we get into it as we continue in doing stories of nairobi i feel like i've had my hair for very long styled like this but i like it though um, and so um, I think one of the things that um, I'm really happy to discuss today is this cross inspiration happening just like cross pollination um, one John has been inside to start a YouTube channel again like I said link on description uh, Vin has been inspired to go to a driving school which is amazing and uh, uh, something that really moved me this morning as I was reading the comments is the dream has come true thank you for your support uh for your support victor with victor team uh i was really moved this morning one of the things that really moves me every morning i answer to the comments except yesterday i was busy with work and so i wasn't able to but i caught up with all the comments today the other thing that has really moved me is a number of encouraging, empowering, lifting, energizing, what do I say? I mean, I even lack words. Emails that I receive every day from you guys. You may not know. But um, I want to be grateful for everyone who's taken their time. I know it's not easy just knowing somebody from the video and sending them such touching messages or emails. And my comments have been flooded with inspiration, motivation. And I'm just so grateful for you guys. I wish you know. I'm very grateful for you guys. You inspire me to do more and bring you more. And so with that being said, I want to say there are two of my people. The other one was just, the name came as user. But they've been, been inspired to do YouTube as well. So they are starting their YouTube channel. Another special story is a continued supporter of mine, Sibeso. Sibeso. Yeah, I've seen Sibeso really um, uh, watch and support me, but I didn't know the struggle that Sibeso was going through. And so when I saw Sibeso's story on, uh, on the comment section, I was really moved and happy. Happy, why? Yeah, Sibeso uh, is uh, uh, a survivor of um, uh, the spinal, I think uh, she had broken her spine. And I was watching some of the story also. Go to, go to Sibeso's channel and please subscribe. She's been inspired by Victor Sweet Victor. And if you watch my intro video, my main things are to inspire, inform, educate, and also learn. Share and learn. Yes. And so I'm so glad that this is coming to life and it's really happening uh, to my viewers and supporters. Um, I hope to continue supporting and inspiring, educating, and also informing in different ways. I'm so proud that at least now, uh, what you guys and uh, Vic, Team Victor with Victor have started and supported has become something that is now that now has a ripple effect in the community and the world at large. Yeah, we are really 
looking forward to do more to inspire educate, educate and share the other thing that i wanted to address is um as we were doing the previous uh, stories of the villagers um i realized that there was too much wind it really frustrated me but i really liked the story and i loved them and i wanted to share i hope you guys learned from them i uh, also i appreciate uh, uh supporters who give me insights on what to do and what not to do so uh, there's one supporter of mine who said stop clapping your hands <laughs> when you're doing the stories again i really appreciate this feedback and i really take them into consideration i appreciate people who are very honest with me without showing their frustrations or rather being frustrated because if you're frustrated i'm frustrated but this guy said it lightly lightly and he, he i think he meant it for the better good i am gonna avoid uh, i mean as you do content creation like when i started um um there are a lot of bad behaviors that only people can help you see that you're um, you know or things that frustrate some of the viewers um and so uh, i look forward to be patient with me it's something that i'm used to uh <laughs> because i speak clapping also speaks different to my community uh yeah the other communities actually in africa like i think i'm not sure if it's the sudanese or which uh, community that clicks and that is supposed to mean yes so they would go in kenya that is very disrespectful but also i think we can learn as we unlearn some of the things that yeah because i imagine clicking would be disrespectful to a kenyan but it's something very polite to I, i'm not sure if it's a sudanese i think so i'm not really sure yeah and so i appreciate and celebrate as we learn and also share our cultures and differences in our culture yeah and so um, the last thing that i wanted to talk about is i want to apologize for the sound in the previous videos we have put measures to address that so um i was really excited to do those stories and by the time i was done and we were editing i realized oh it was a bit windy uh, especially for lindy which is a, lin a windy village <laughs> And so, <laughs> and so I appreciate everybody who watched that video to the end. I hope you gathered something as well. I mean, there are a couple of things that you could hear and uh, gather from. So, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? Of the 14 villages, we are in the 12th village. So, two more villages to go. I look forward to taking you guys through this village. Please enjoy celebrate and appreciate you if you're new here please remember to hit the subscribe button don't forget to hit the like button it looks like this hit the like button your comments are as very important as your subscription so we celebrate and appreciate you as we hit the road to 3k subscribe let's go 12 village in kibiga two more to go ladies and gentlemen i really appreciate i can't believe you guys are stuck with me from the first village to the 14th to the 12th village as we head to the 14th village let's go so 12th village ladies and gentlemen we are at ayani ladies and gentlemen and i'm so excited two more villages to go and so now on victor's will be there. if you're new in here remember to subscribe and if you are continued support, I will really celebrate and appreciate you. So this village, ladies and gentlemen, this village is considered the central business district of Kibera. Remember, it's the 12th village. I hope you're enjoying the vlog. And I have my buddy here, the guy who was inspiring me to be a lyricist. <laughs> He's also down in our Christmas videos. Morocco Kalahari. Morocco Kalahari has been the Once big... again, anytime we're there. Oh, so what it's do you tell us? with Victor. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys the story of this guy. This is like the first generation, second generation of first generation. Second rap generation. Second generation rap rap rappers in Kibera. Tell us about rap in Kibera, bro. Um, rap in Kibera is very deep considering uh, Kibera is uh, one of the largest, uh, is actually the largest slum in Kenya. In uh, Africa, actually, yeah, in, in the Africa, world right now. Yeah, but in Kenya, so yeah. you can imagine. So there's like ups and downs of how everybody lives here and how mm -hmm. you can look at music, mm -hmm. dance. 
and other types of uh, art, 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 art mediums mm -hmm. from here. Mm. Lakini chini ya maji kibera kiberiti. Kibera kiberiti yeah. means kibera the matchbox. Yes. <laughs> yeah, once you light one match and you put it inside the other matches, all the matches light. It flows like water. It's like fire. a domino effect. So yeah. like it's really breathtaking to be from in the middle of the motherland. So Morocco, we've been doing I've been I've been sharing uh stories of the 14 villages in Kibera. And I think it's good because uh, growing up, I was looking up to these guys. I used to be a rapper, but I quit. <laughs> why, why? I couldn't keep up. <laughs> but he, 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 he be boys so now. So I chose breaking. Yeah, so it's yeah, the which best is break an now. element also. Were you in the element event this weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, uh, at uh, at Moringa area. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. It was yes. uh, it was really nice, and uh, it could show that uh, many people from the slum actually have something called. Uh, opportunistic thinking of how we can approach art right. and hip-hop as, as, as a platform. Right, so why I'm calling this, I told people this is the central business district of Kibera because one, this is where all the matatus stand around. Yeah. This is like the end of the matatus in Kibera. Yeah, this is like the, this is like the, this is like the Hell's Gate. Yes, the yeah. Hell's Gate. <laughs> and we also have our financial bank here, yeah. which is equity, it's a community bank in the hood. Yes. Uh, bro, what do you know about Hayani? Um, what I know I, uh, about Ayani, it started around the uh, uh, 1950s. It's been there before. It's been there before. <laughs> before <laughs> the Iron 50s, and uh, it was a it was a it was a forest back then. <laughs> and uh, this is Nubian territory. Most people who owned properties here are Nubian because uh -huh. the Nubians were given title deeds, and uh, they are also a tribe of Kenya, and they were appreciated by their title deeds. So, this which also reflects the story that we did initially about Kambi Muru. So we're just getting into the heart of Kibera, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is the Nubian community. Yeah, Nubian so Morocco community. was here before me, so I'm really great to get in. I'm really happy to get in the insights yes. and share with you the so insights. It's very unique because it is actually. Uh, Co co connected to like two huge neighborhoods like Jamhuri which is called the Uptown Kibera mm. and uh, all the other villages you've passed uh, Soweto and Katokara that's mm. down down Kibera mm. so in the middle it is just like the oasis and it is the only village on this Uptown side of Kibera with a really prestigious mosque Exactly, so prestigious show, mosque. So we yeah, have the banks here. Is a landmark uh -huh. uh, here in Ayani. So it goes to show that the Nubians actually were here and settled here before time. Before anyone uh, we else. say like Okunu Shabukotu, but no, it's not our area. This is actually Nubian area. But over the years, they were, they were sold their properties and they were rented. But we're actually in Nubian kingdom right now. This is interesting because the previous story we did, we did with a Nubian lady. And that's what she explained. Mor yeah. Like I say, Morocco is second generation rapper so he was here before me yes. and so what I'm trying to explain here is he just said it I, I know I've been saying it uh, Kibera had been a forest so he said Ayani was a forest yes even and the word uh, even the word itself uh, Kibera means forest in uh, Nubia, Nubian. Nubian great yeah. you're just affirming what we've been saying yes. all through but also Morocco let me ask you yeah. a quick question guys as we've been walking you guys have been seeing uh, uh, the shops that makes it the business district. Yes. You've heard that we have the most prestigious mosque here. I hope I'll be able to show you guys. Yeah, show you we have that. a bank here. Yes. We have bus stops here. So it's just a walk. It's also a different neighborhood. Uh, you'll see these small, small, colorful shops, but also it's a gated community. Most of the yeah, people you can here feel the Soweto South Africa vibe uh -huh. in the gated communities uh -huh. area. And uh, what, 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 what uh, the first thing that you can notice is like the silence around because it is not uh, densely populated because right. it's like the leafy suburbs of Kibera, but yeah, it's still it's, Kibera. It's very controlled, as you guys can see, even yeah. with the building, the architecture. Yeah, so, so this is like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Morocco, let me ask you this is the first place where you it is really defined by the lines so there's line a yeah. line k line l line, line b line, line c, c. Yeah, so. do, do you understand anything about that yeah these lines were, 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 were designed uh for like you know just for placement purposes but when you look how they were arranged they are arranged uh, backwards because line a is all the way down and mm -hmm. line line x is all the way up, up so yes geographically that means uh, that's how they were naming them but when you look at it uh, it's still you can feel kibera inside you and when you look at the skyline back there that's uh the ngong forest is coming up all the way that's why the clouds are coming up all this way so it's like topography and relief 
uh, side because we're in the highlands yes. in the middle of the central business so the forest cuts across a uh, piece of it is still seen Mambo. Yes. It's still seen in the Gong, Gong forest. Yes, yes. Uh, but as Morocco said, this used to be uh, a forest. Yeah. So then whose land is it? It's actually, um, it's Kenyan land, but uh, the Nubians, when they came during the railway, when the railway was being built, See the and they were also, yeah, they were also, yeah. you know, they were also part of, like, uh, collaborators with the British. The At Nubians. that time, it was a colony. A colony. Yeah. So be, being given, like, a golden guest, gesture and a golden package from the Her Majesty the Queen, uh -huh. um, they were they were allocated land inside uh, the central business di district of Nairobi. So Kibera was a no man's land, land, but he came yeah. to Nubia. Yeah, it was land. given to the Nubians like yeah. as, a, as, a, as, a, as a thank you gift. Mm. As a thank you gift uh, for volunteering and being uh, collaborators with the British. So The British Army. So you can see around, everything is silent. You, yeah, you just, it's just your normal neighborhood cool. infrastructure behind. Yes. But uh, technically, if we tell you we are in Kibra without uh, saying it, you, you cannot believe. Yeah. We are in Kibra, this is like silent uptown Kibra. Yeah. So really small. But uh, at night, um, something I can say about also during uh, the past few years, uh, five years, uh, things have chilled down. But this uptown side of Kibra, as cute and beautiful as it looks, mm. is the most dangerous at night because of the motorcycle gangs. I'm really happy that you say yeah, that. Yeah, the motorcycle gangs and uh mostly you know criminal activity at night because uh because it's not this densely populated if somebody even snatches from you right now even in the midday when you scream nobody can help you i also know i also yeah, know another because do. there are other because is because yeah. this uh this is the closest middle class neighborhood to yes. the slums yes so it's like <laughs> It's the closest suburb to the slums, so yes. you can imagine uh, how 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 much the magnanimity of activities so, that happens, yeah, the especially people live after here. dusk. The people who yes. live here become a target, a huge target yes. for the criminal gangs. From as the cute night. as it looks, yes, it is very most dangerous at night. You cannot scream when you go in a corner. So the other thing, yeah. Morocco, I don't know. I've seen you for the longest time. I've seen you in Fort Jesus. I don't yes. know if you're a Barbie or if you're from the ghetto. I am actually hybrid. I am. Uh, I, I oh, you are an upgrade uh, of the ghetto. I was raised in the slums, and uh, when my mom got an upgrade in, in her job, that's where we got to test. Uh, Great. So, uptown life. So I have both. Uh, I have tested both sides of both lives. Great. So growing up in the ghetto, I personally grew uh, grew up in Kianda. I know you know this. Yes. But growing up in the ghetto, this is the first dream, the first place you dream to move to yeah. as a ghetto kid. Yeah. It is always the first goal, the first step you dream to get to. Yes. As you make your first money, you're always thinking one I day go I will go to Ayani. Yes. <laughs> Ayani is the is the Hamptons of uh, Kibera. <laughs> so what is what is other your other take or something you want to share about Ayani? Another thing I want to share about Ayani because uh, when music started uh, back in Kenya. Uh, most studios were not available inside this land, uh -huh. so most producers who could afford equipment at that time uh -huh. and access to, you know, uh -huh. good uh, professional studios all uh -huh. came from Miami. So even people all came all the way from Eastlands. You can see Kaka Sungura, Rabbit. He, all, he came to here in our studios. These are some of the biggest rappers. Abbas yeah, Kubaf, yeah, I remember, Abbas Kubaf, during your yeah. era. Yeah, our uh, Morocco Oto, Kalahari, Octopizo, <laughs> Kevo K Force. Yeah, so this know. is the end of this is line. This is line. This Bro, is line. line? Yeah. Line, this o. Is line O. So this is the end of line O. We're gonna walk back. Yes. Uh, yes. And so Morocco, mm -hmm. I was doing a story of music in Kibera, but I was talking to the youngest generation. Yeah. This was the first place where we had our first music studio. Yes. So that makes it iconic. Yeah, it's iconic. It's actually a landmark and it goes to show like Kibera was built on the backbone of the slums. But Ayani is one of the few um, proof that uh, the backbones of the slum, you can do something called a, a rags to riches story. Most people who have thrived here from Ayani have a story and they always just came from, they came from the slum. Everywhere you follow it, Grandpa Records, when you follow it, when you look at even, uh, when you look at our current MP, our former MP, all of them can, can, can occur, God rest his soul is, be, God rest, rest his soul is in peace, our current, uh, MP. Everything, um, shows that the leafy suburb of Aslam is, you know, 
it, it's proof that the, the, the slum is a backbone of society. So when people look at a slum and say, oh, yeah, that's a slum, nothing can, good can come from it, that's a lie because uh, this is actual truth that uh, roses can actually grow from concrete. And, Tell us your music journey, bro. Now uh, that we have you here. So this, uh, this is... This is one of the legendary. I told him even before that yeah. I don't want to crown him. <laughs> or I don't want to give him his flowers in the yes, coffin. Yes. Nobody's saying Morocco is dying. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But uh, I, I mean crowning you as one of the legendary. I appreciate and I also crown you as the as the African B-Boy <laughs> championship, man. It's victors with Victor Thanks. every time Morocco. B-Boy victor. It's your hard work that he does his, He does it on and off the dance floor. So it. it's but a, today is it's about you, bro. Let's Thank talk you. about Morocco Kalahari, the rapper. Yeah. So uh, you're gonna hold it like this, bro. Yeah, it's okay. Hold I can it like hold. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes. yeah. So uh, what is your music story and your journey? Um, Tell uh, us how you I'm began from music. humble. What be inspired that? I'm from humble beginnings. Uh, my mom was a matron at uh, Kenyatta National Hospital, mm -hmm. but before she got the job, uh, she had finished uh, her course in college. Mm -hmm. So we had to struggle in the slum mm -hmm. by the time she gets a job. So raised by single mother, and you can imagine. The people your 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 in the your influence is coming from at that time, Isa, Jokali, mm -hmm. things like that, and you get to know. So these are some of the legendary rappers. Yeah, and uh, I started just uh, every Sunday there would be a newspaper. The the Daily Nation newspaper would come with songs lyrics mm -hmm. at the back of the Sunday Nation. Mm -hmm. And you pick it out and you stick it in your exercise book and you cram those lines. Even on the walls. Bro. Yeah, we would and stick in school, those you lines. Stick them on the lockers. So you, know this, you already know. Yeah, <laughs> if you know, if you know, you know. If you don't know, forget about forget it. Forget about it. So what happened was uh, my friend started saying, Oh, if we can cram these lines and giddy giddy maji maji they're rapping in, you know, why can't we write our Give own? Give some of his relics. Like uh um, yeah, so at that time, you know, you, you're trying to think, oh, if they can make this, can I make mine? And then my mom bought me a Walkman, so I would play Naughty by Nature, and then you start making your own lines. Walkman. At that, and then Tell this new generation what a Walkman is. A Walkman is a small contraption that you put a cassette inside and put it on your hip and you attach your headphones to. Then you play the music. It is currently now being substituted by the iPod. Mm -hmm. Or the iPod. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it used to be you put your cassette inside for those next generation people who don't know what that is. Mm. Yeah, you put the cassette and you play your music there. If uh, you want to rewind, you can use your biro mm -hmm. and for the cassette. But uh, after that, we started the. Uh, now, this court. This is where. Yeah. Underdog Records started the first studio ever yeah, in Kibera. Green Mabati, you can see the green Mabati, the green roofing yeah, the right green there. Roofing. Yeah, DJ Bubs, that's where the magic all happened and started in Kibera. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, people started recording Octopizo, Viru Simbaya from Kibera, Kevo K-Force, Chihuahua, King Kaka, our very own, and Chicks also. You know, Pizzo Diesel, you know, people like that. Shanti, Shanti the, the other one called Chantel, Tokelezea. There is cookers. one other that uh, there is another one that you keep forgetting. I keep forgetting in Kibra. Who do I keep forgetting? The legendary Morocco Kalahari. Yeah, yeah, I him. <laughs> himself. So, uh, so it was always a vibe, and uh, these are landmarks that will always be signatured uh, within our geography in Kibra slums. Forever. And he's one of them, and he's also a part of our history. Appreciate. So every time you see this, just remember we are victors with Victor. And nothing is impossible. Right, I appreciate. I mean, I appreciate this crowning coming from a legendary yeah, <laughs> himself and crowning me, acknowledging the work that I do with the community. So, yes. Morocco, one other question. Yes, sir. I don't know what to speculate, but then I've heard that Ayani also used to be a cemetery. Yeah, it used to be a cemetery in the 60s. It's going behind the mosque. Okay. That used to be attached to Ayani Primary, uh -huh. and that was at the same time that uh, Madaraka Estate uh -huh. used to be a cemetery. Langata was not a cemetery, which is the current cemetery right now. Uh -huh. So something spooky that we can tell you about this area uh -huh. is at night, it is silent. If you have a bicycle, if somebody is riding a bicycle at night, you can hear it from half a kilometer away, because they know that the silence is deafening. 
because because it was a former graveyard. Mm. There have been rumors of uh, people being attacked mm -hmm. by genies yes. and spiritual uh, spiritual. Uh, this is how young people sell water here. Yeah. Yes. There Continue. Some people, sorry. So there have been rumors of like uh, supernatural, you know. Uh -huh. Encounters like with genies uh -huh. and uh, spirits from the Nubian ancestral land, uh -huh. but they have not been proven. Uh -huh. But they're still spooky. Uh -huh. Up to this day, you can run into a genie, but you never know. You never know. Yeah, that's uh, one of the secrets uh, that we can. Uh, so explore. this is Ayani fast food. This is one of the best restaurants. That's smart. Maybe I, we show them around. Yeah. Jemo, yeah. Jemo. So this is one of the best. Made about Kosalama. Yeah, so we, it's just our local area. So this is where we get our yeah, favorite yeah, food. Yeah, yeah. yeah, everything you want, like from the Indian chapati. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get the ugali, you can get the omena, anything you want. So when you come, we're going to show you guys around. Go make Jemu. You always find him here. Yeah, here is my, this is my Everything best. fresh. <laughs> everything <Yeah>. fresh. <laughs> This is where you get some of the best foods that represent yeah, Kibera. And behind us, we can see the historical, historical mosque. mosque. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, it's over 50, it's years, 50 years old. And yeah. um, it's uh, actually a really big land, landmark in Ayani Kibera. Yeah, let's keep going, bro. Yeah, but you see why we call this the central business district of Kibera. A lot of young people. More the, shops than houses. Yes, the, yes. the street is there is very busy. Yes. Do you know the name of this street, bro? It, this street is called Dubai. Dubai Street. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Yeah, so know. let us know in the comment section what you guys know about Dubai yes. Street. Yeah. Now you know. <laughs> if you didn't know, now no, you no, know. Yeah. So I'm gonna turn so they can see the historical yeah. mosque the that historical we have here. Mosque. I don't want to. Um, um, I don't want to trespass or even show. I know how much we respect this mosque. Jamia mosque. Yes, we really appreciate and yeah, and celebrate how they've kept it clean. You yes, can, you can just feel, you can feel the history in the air. Right. Yes. And also, Inayani is actually the first place that a gym was established in Kibera. Yes, the first gym. Uh, actually, you're saying the and a fitness it, center. Uh, the first sophisticated gym. The first sophisticated the gyms like we used to, you know, we would take like stones and pierce them through with the uh, metal metal pipes. Yeah, and yes, yes. Called, uh, makeshift gym. Yeah, the first uh, sophisticated and equipped gym in Kibra was this way. Like, yeah, which is also home to very many boxes and uh, very many legendary boxes. So it's called Urban Fitness. I hope they'll allow us. So there is yoga, there is hiking, or oh, they have hiking activity. They do a lot of uh, hey, what's up? A lot of activities. Yeah. yeah, it is the first sophisticated, best of the gyms that you will find in Kibera, only at Ayani. Yeah, you can check out. We have, you know, we have check yeah, yeah, we don't want to interrupt uh, training inside here. So we won't go in because of Kokavisa. Yeah, so you see how equipped it is. Yeah, it's very equipped actually. Yeah. So, the boy, we can tell you, we want to. Yeah. This is tea. I don't come to this this gym, but I used to work out. Oh my out God, this that is so strong. <laughs> I used to work out. I'm glad you're still working out. We were just vlogging about the gym oh. and helping, you know, uh, put it out there. So I'll see you around. Uh, yeah. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, you know, fitness uh, goes uh, hand in hand with mental health. Right. Because your physical health also can help your mental, mental health. health. Right. So it's something. Uh, it's a it's a activity of interest. And always watch this space, yeah. Right. Victors with Victor, you Victors with everything, Victor. Everything, anything. At yeah, any I time. feel like one of the things that identifies Kibera is this this mosque, bro. Yeah. You see, yeah, it's now almost you 50. See it. It's more than 50 years old. It is actually 58 years old. It's the. It's the 50? Fifty-one. Yeah, so it's fifty-one years. Fifty-one. Old. Yeah. Oh, fifty-one. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it is probably one of the most establishments here. Um, it's a landmark. spiritual, yes, establishments, and I think there is honor and uh, respect accorded to it when you are here in Ayani. And you can actually feel like the spirituality around you. 
right. because of how people are more relaxed around this area yeah, and yeah. not rowdy. Yeah, there's no noise. Right, but it's Kibera. Mm -hmm. It's like silent Kibera. So, uh, one of the interesting things that I was talking to our Nubian mama about is uh, how people have come and invaded Kibera and taken even the land that was allocated for them yeah, that's uh, by force. So there used to be a corrupt chief. I don't know if you know this story, but there was a corrupt chief uh, in the neighborhood who was actually getting bribes and giving people the Nubians land. Yeah, these ones were called uh, ghost uh, title deeds. Ghost title deeds, yes. Yeah, because um, some people were given title deeds uh, before, mm -hmm. and uh, it was under Alice. Mm -hmm. But uh, most uh, elderly couldn't like maintain keeping their paperwork. Right. So at the end of the day, the chiefs would uh, would, would would use these things called uh, written agreement. Mm. So guys will be selling off land with just written agreements with right. title deeds. Right. So that's where a push and pull came over. Mm. And there was a, that is something that uh, politically sparked even uh, uh, one of the hugest bloodsheds uh, in our country that we've ever seen uh, called the uh, 2007 election First violence. election violence, yeah, yeah. Because like some other people from other tribes came and bought their land um, clean deal. Mm -hmm. But due, due to this um, corrupt chiefs, um, we would not actually prove that they bought uh, the land there with the original uh, title Documents, deed. Yeah. Yes, yes. So this was the grudge undercover. So people used the uh, elections as a, as a way to vent their, their, their grievances beliefs, and their, their frustrations. Yes. And uh, that's why mo uh, there was a huge tribe that was relocated and uh, they they were like uh, victims of uh, inland uh, inland inland uh, clashes mm. um, especially the kikuyu mm. they had bought a lot of land but uh, eventually they were told you guys you bought fake land mm. so that's because of these corrupt chiefs mm. but now because of the anti-corrupt corruption commission and the ministry of lands mm. uh, guys are getting back their land slowly mm. but the scar will always be there because of you know what happened right in the past two decades so right here we're in front of actually this is one of the biggest schools, schools. in nairobi after olympic School. olympic Ayani Pri primary yes ayani primary so olympic is the biggest actually with six thousand students in it you yes, know this right yes, yes yes and this is the second biggest i'm not sure but about five thousand or four thousand kids it's actually four thousand uh four thousand kids yes so the second actually in the country this is the biggest in the second biggest in the country, country yes. the first biggest is also in kebera which is yes. olympic primary the area where i showed yeah. you guys and uh do you know the history of ayani primary um not no no um no i i cannot say i know a lot about uh, ayani primary mm -hmm. but uh, it has delivered uh, very many leaders in society mm -hmm. even the cs uh, for uh, petroleum was uh, from Miami Primary. Mm. Uh, the current governor Sakaja, at some point he came he studied, uh, he yes. studied to Miami Primary, Primary before he relocated back right. to Eastlands. Also, uh, the comedian Eric Omondi came to Miami Primary, Primary and uh, transferred uh, later. But uh, what I can say, the most special person that has come from Ayani is our very own footballer Jesse Were, who is now playing for Zesco in Zambia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hear there's a rumor that Tottenham Hotspurs are thinking about a, a transfer from there, from Zambia to the to to the Premier League. So that's a really he was born and raised. He went here from baby class to when he finished. Class He's called eight. Jesse Were. Yes. He lives here, a very big footballer, mm -hmm. and also Edward Lavazza, who played for uh, Egypt. And uh, we have uh, very many sports uh, people we can say come. And also uh, Zita Jemoy, who was a former Miss Kibra and is right now a very big uh, news uh, sports anchor mm -hmm. in uh, Royal Media. Mm -hmm. Coach, uh, Royal Media. Long time, good to see you. Sorry, we were just vlogging, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
don't look at a school like a school, you know. Just think about it like, you know, uh, a cocoon that the kids have to pass through their metamorphosis to turn from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Yeah, also some of the biggest rugby, rugby players came yes. from Miami here. Yeah, 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 so you guys know Kenya is known for the biggest rugby playing around the world. It is eminent and inevitable. Inevitable, right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, we're walking in. So we're walking in Ayani and this is one of the biggest storytellers in What's Kibera. That? I tried telling his story, but he dodged me. He's waiting for me to be big uh, uh, so that he can do the story. So we grew up with this guy in the slum, but uh, he's doing a great work. You have a YouTube channel. Uh, at the moment, I don't have a YouTube channel. You're always doing stories on Facebook. So I'll share his uh, profile on the description on Devo Photography. Yeah. What is the name on Facebook? Huh? On Devo Photography. On Devo Photography, yeah. but I'll share the link on bio. Great job, man. Thank you. Yeah, he's one of the inspirations as to why I'm and doing the story. And also, an award-winning videographer. Exactly, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> oh, guys, so, uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. Uh, so it's always a pleasure to be in his right presence. now. Yes. I'm doing uh, the 14 villages of Kibera. Yes. This is the 12th that we are doing. Wow, Morocco Kanda. Kalahari as the legendary is taking us around. And this is not Kanda. This is. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jamuri. Yeah. This is Jamuri. I don't know. <laughs> You're playing with our viewers, bro. <laughs> Can you be serious? Also, he's the producer for some of the biggest uh, Kenyan videos. He's behind the visuals of Kenyan videos for Calligraph Jones, if you know this. Is Award winning Kenyan. Videos. This is the top rapper. And also from Kibera Octopizo number nine. I hope to host him in the show one of these days. Yes. And uh, Onivo, what do you want to tell our viewers, bro? Keep it locked, man. Is coming. I hope to host you in the show, bro, one of these days. Now I'm getting big. I have support globally. Huh? So are you ready to come to the show? I'll just come, not for the viewers, but because of your... <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think also it's important for the viewers because now we're telling stories of Kibera done by Kibera and sons and daughters of Kibera. But also on Divo, one of the reasons I want to host him in the show, uh, he's slightly a generation above me. I know he's in a rush and we are stopping him. But he's one of the generations that defined the transition, defr transition from crime to positive art and storytelling in Kibera. Peace, bro. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you in the show. Uh, <laughs> we'll see you in the show, bro. Yeah. yeah, so you see how interesting stories of Kibera and with Kibera and yeah. You were saying something. So, Ayani Primary is a proof that uh, regardless of uh, the quality of education that you give the child, mm. if it's poor quality education or high class quality education, Standard quality education should be paramount because your kid gets to meet like people who are less fortunate than them mm -hmm. or more fortunate than them. Mm -hmm. it, it can give them something called uh, a double way of how they look at life. Salama, mami. And it, salama. Will, it will make them optimistic uh -huh. and they can be opportunists also considering it's a digital era uh -huh. and things are bound to happen. So uh -huh. any primary will always be there. People, very many people went through there and they'll still pass through there and it's not just Ayani Primary, it's all types of primary schools around. That's why uh, Slam Dance and uh, B-Boy Vic, uh, mm -hmm. Victors with Victor, also involve kids in their dances and stuff like that. It's, it shows that you guys are very philanthropic when we you're molding that. the future. We appreciate In, in a few years, you would not be able to do a headstand. I know, I know. Yes, so I'm already struggling with breaking Very emotional now. what you guys are doing yeah. online and offline. And uh, this primary school, it's got me thinking that Victors with Victor is something that will go on for a long time. And even the future generation who know they have been supported or educated by B-Boy Vic. Inspiration. And inspired. To uh, the best. Yeah, we have thrown, we have thrown the net to the sea and not just to catch fish for a coach but to also coach the fish right so that they should know what ends they can go in this big ocean called life and mm -hmm. if you have a talent whether it be dancing 
rapping or whatever just remember where you're from because where you're from will determine where you're going so so much wisdom, that's why we're man. just taking a small yeah. now you understand yeah. why i celebrate my yeah. brother <laughs> yeah. so now this is uh, so I'm, I'm, i was talking to a new generation rapper yes. in um lindy no, what was his name? No, in Laini Saba. He's very new generation. I don't think he, you would really know him. Uh -huh. But I, I, I needed a fresh blood. Uh, and uh, to my realization, um, I mean, they're still growing. They're still platform for growth. Yes. He's a 20-year-old kid. Yeah. He, does, he has one video out, but as a group. But also what I learned about them, this is another business um, street. Yes. What I learned is uh, they really don't understand why and what they're doing music for. Yes. Take us into your music journey. You had started talking to us about this. Yeah, when I reached uh, the point of um, being perfecting my art uh, as a freestyle rapper, uh -huh. I noticed there were different types of uh, musicians, mm -hmm. like there are people who can write their music and then record it. Mm -hmm. I started to study myself. That's what everybody should do if you're a dancer, musician. Any creative. Any creative. Mm -hmm. Study yourself, watch yourself, uh, listen to yourself. Uh, I noticed I could do freestyle. Freestyle is like you give me any word, I just make the song from there. Okay, Victor with Victor. For example, Victor with Victor. Check it to Kondani, Apo Manze, to Constrictor, to Ko Apondani, Konya Victor, na Victor, to Kikuja, to Nasema, to Pendi Victor, Waki Kuja 3 plus 3, Nani Sita, Uda Chesa, Ioki, to Nama Mita, Mama Baby, Mama Mama, Mama Sita, every meal. Kiku. So it's. Go like, support. The next word is support. Tiki to kona support. Tiki kuja base manze to na report. Ini b boy manze na hip hop. Tiki kuja to na sesa kony support. Ina shikilia manze to kovigilia manze una vujilia manze una ingilia manze wena shangilia. No support. No support. <laughs> so it's uh, something called real time uh, construction of lyrics. So I decided let, let me focus on there because now they are mainstream artists and uh, they are getting more money than us and uh, we notice. If there are people supporting the mainstream, there are also people supporting the underground. Uh -huh. So I chose my, my part of the music industry that I want to in, indulge in. Uh -huh. And that's what uh, brought me through. Don't follow the, the crowd. When you follow the crowd sometimes, it will show like maybe you're a copycat or some somebody cliche. Or a clout, Just do or a you, clown. yeah, or a clout or a clown. Or a, <laughs> see, you don't know that I used to be a rapper, bro. Remember, yeah. I used to come to so, your freeze trials. Stations. When when you look at it uh, from that aspect, it will keep you going and always think about like a plan B. And you'll don't, be crowned. Yeah, and you'll be crowned. And <laughs> don't put a plan A for everything. Just know in your life there will always be a plan B. Don't uh, if you, if you, if you're focusing on music, make sure your plan B. If you have a side hustle, continue with it. If you have education, continue with it. Mm. Don't put all the eggs in one basket. That's all I can say. Okay. But uh, the music, uh, the music journey mm -hmm. has been very magical. And uh, my secrets to, in terms of the big shows that I've done in Europe, mm. uh, uh, in the in the in England, in South Africa, all those shows, and all that, uh, all those uh, opportunities that I've landed into was. Mm that I believed in myself mm. and even if somebody is way more awesome mm. than yeah, you bro. no <laughs> hating mm. make sure and uh, have a habit of acknowledging people better than you don't put all that uh, pressure on your on your heart hate and, is a bait yeah hate is a bait <laughs> uh, and you and hate if hate is a bait, you and karma will have a date and by the time you can know what you do, You won't win, I bet. Late. <laughs> and you won't win, I bet. <laughs> and you will go to the lawyer and the lawyer will say, ask Mary, and Mary will say, ask Kate. <laughs> so, so Morocco Kalahari, let's talk to us in <coughs> Europe. Uh, this was uh, during 90s yeah. or 2000? No, uh, Early 2000. 2010, yeah? first time. Airplane is uh, Germany, 2011 uh, Germany, 2012 mm. France, mm. 2015 Belgium, mm. 2017 we were in uh, Netherlands, mm. 2020 UK, mm. 21 UK, 2022 and last year we did uh, we did uh, South Africa. Great. I'm gonna show you guys show you guys some of the architect and then I'm gonna sit down with this guys and we with this guy and we're gonna get back to that conversation yes so that's a lot of travel in europe to be particular yeah, i I've, think we've never been to america 
I don't know why. But uh, America, we coming. <laughs> so Morocco, one of the things that I look forward to reviving is actually um, art and music in our neighborhood. So we're going to have a seat here and have this conversation with this legendary. So one of the things that I look into reviving is art and music. And um, uh, hip hop being one of the elements of the things that I focus on, on my pillar programs, I think for me would be music for social change yeah um music for social change uh, is a, is a, is a good uh, angle to approach uh, your content when you are recording and pro and creating right now uh, be it a dancer or uh, or a musician any creative right yeah, but there's a but mm -hmm. the but is um kibera mm -hmm. is, uh, is 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 a slum that uh, is already on the under the magnifying glass of the united uh, of the international community so there are very many ngos mm -hmm. and governmental organizations mm -hmm. most of them they have different agendas of uh, that they are pushing inside the slums mm -hmm. um when you are a musician in kibera you can take that as a fact and inject it into the type of content that you are producing not expecting and i can repeat not mm -hmm. expecting like capital from your radio play or your airplay you know mm -hmm. it's it's about if, if we are doing an album about the girl child focus on the girl child and uh, also do your research as a musician right now as musicians we have a lot of digital uh, opportunities that are approaching us mm. and resources we're gonna let this corrupt people pass they're yeah. <laughs> going for lunch they're going for lunch see see <laughs> going for lunch. those are the people who are he's munching our tax dog. he's going for a million dollars <laughs> let's yes. continue so i was saying uh you as a kibira artist and musician Think about of all those NGOs. Have you ever approached them? Have you ever asked them permission to do a song that fits their agenda? Propose yourself. You know, make a look for a grant. Let's Use, take you as an example. Have you? Yes, I I, I have. Uh, like last year, we we did a song called Mosquito Bites. Mm. It was about a uh, malaria, World Malaria Day. Ah, okay. Uh, because you noticed there was an NGO around, then they were focused more on malaria awareness. So mm. we did a song about mosquitoes, and they paid us mm, nice. as a jingle. So mm. you can think it's impossible, but it's not. Mm. You are in Kibera, and like it's the diamond in the dirt. Mm. If you are a Kibera musician, think about how you can elevate your music and involve also the NGOs around you. Mm. Uh, you never know. It 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 can be a lucky day. And moving forward, you will get to run into a lot of opportunities that you did not see them coming. So I think always have a plan <clears throat> and make sure around your settings. If you're from the slum, music that you know the way you said that uh, social social change, right? Social change, you know. If you're doing something about global warming, if you're doing something about like teenage pregnancies, just do all your do your hundred percent effort legendary i miss the bad part mm. what is the bad but in a nutshell in a nutshell but keep in mind you are in the capital city of kenya and the it's called the big city the nairobi and mm. you will always run into crooked people but that should not change you the way like this guy conned me or this guy just know there are very many people that in, you will run into in your life who mm. are not there to promote you there it is for their for their personal interest mm. but don't don't keep don't it, in, put your it heart. in your heart yeah right. just do you always have a plan mm. and be unpredictable mm. but always make sure you are professional to the highest of ends this is the year 2024 and don't behave like somebody who is working music in the 1970s mm. things have changed and also you can you can change so uh morocco of key interest and i think uh now even depending on ngos and all these institutions they come they really influence the music that you do and what you talk about mm -hmm. a lot of uh people especially um elites yes 
and uh, people in the corporate world and in the office i'm one of them but i'm still in the creative world yeah but i know my people so for me to get to the point of even sitting down with some of the corporates when i go to the meeting i think one of the things is branding and i know it's really annoying for a lot of creatives i mean you want to be in your jersey and your your ragged pants really nice yeah, you yeah, see yeah. i want to be in my you know freestyle more than my locks but one of the things that i want to teach kibera artists is branding and just i mean living in kibera i've learned to be able to survive in a desert and in the ocean i don't know if you get what i'm saying yeah both uh, both uh, both hostilities you understand yeah both so hostilities. if you know what you want try and flex to get what you want be flexible to get what you want and i think that's one of the things that has hindered i know a lot of very creative talented young people but they're like oh i have to carry my cart jabba i have to smoke my weed so i can go to this meeting or to this event i have to wear i don't know my jacket i have to you know wear my crocs to go to this meeting there are people who are turned off by that and that, like they said i know as a lot of young creatives in kibera we've really ignored this but they say the first impression first impression matters the most mm -hmm. and uh, you can package yourself in a way that on online you look ragged and you look you know you're you know ragged off the edge and you know still clean you know yeah. presentable even if not so i'm gonna clean. tell no, you I'm this saying, i'm gonna I'm, tell I'm, you I'm this lyri lyrically so first impression decides the creation yes <laughs> First impression decides the creation. So whatever is created from the first impression is decided by the first impression. Yeah. Okay. And also, if you think that what you're doing and your look and your image is the one that's attracting more views for you, good for you. But at the end of the day, those corporates won't care. You have to meet them from a corporate point of view. Exactly. Thank you very much for Even saying this. Even if you're a gangster. Even if you're a gangster rap, I'm a gangster rapper. And you started this gangster shit. shit and this the man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't swear on this channel, bro. I'm sorry, I will. I know, I know, so, and we're about to talk about the gangster. But at least I have one shirt and one khaki trouser that I can wear. And, Thank you, and bro. I look for forward a, for to calling you for my for first a corporate time. event and a tie. It won't hurt you. Mm. Don't wear it every day. Just put it there. Just save it for something important. Yeah. Because the way he has just said, um, the first impression is your creation, and don't be, don't be, don't be a lie, don't be an animation. Right. But uh, all in all, you should be very mature enough to understand protocol. There's mm -hmm. something called protocol. It was existed before you were born, and it will exist even when you're after your death. Mm -hmm. There's a protocol for every type of story and every type of in, uh, situation that you'll ever run into. Right. Your life. Right. So be mature, always research before you do what you do. And uh, what uh, he has said is uh, true. The corporate world exists. And when you look at other big artists, they also have two, two sides of their face. There's, for example, there's Morocco on stage and there's Morocco in the office trying to pitch something. So I'm going to tell you a story. It's a very interesting story. So I'm retiring from the floor. What? Yeah, I'm not going to be dancing from next year. Why? But, no, I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. So Victor's with Victor is going to be a bigger picture now. Okay. Uh, I mean, the organization is still doing dance. I have uh, generation and generations of dancers. Mm -hmm. But, bro, I think this was a calling for me to be able to tell stories of Kibera in a different way. The dance will continue. Yeah. Breaking still continues. Vic still remains the first b-boy in Kibera. Yeah. But um, one of the things that I have... In to retirement so um there's a government i'm not gonna say which government that has funded me oh it's the government it's the high government <laughs> the government i'm not gonna say it until until it happens so they've funded me i mean it's confirmed they funded me to be doing tours dance tours teaching dance for social change oh, and listen specifically okay, okay, specifically okay. <laughs> specifically breaking yeah. to be particular and uh uh breaking to be particular and so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go into 24 counties in kenya wow 
that's a lot 24 counties you 24. know kenya has how many counties it has uh 48 so i'm doing half of those counties yes Wow. and i'm teaching breaking like i'm taking this has been so the how dream do you feel how do you feel right now? Uh, how do i feel i feel like it's energy that has followed i feel very fortunate but i also acknowledge that i worked for it so it's energy that i called that i'm receiving wow congratulations thank you bro thank you bro that's why it's called victors with victors <laughs> The cake is too big, I can't eat yeah. it alone. One of the things that I want to pull into the project or after the project is uh, music rap to be particular. But like I said, for social change. Yes, social change. <laughs> I'm very specific social change. about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, we, we, we let the corrupt people pass again. They're going for another house. <laughs> That's the second one. Second, second helicopter, sandwich helicopter. <laughs> they always go for sandwiches with helicopters. Yeah, so the first thing that we are doing after the tour in Kibera is we are doing an audition to get one female artist uh -huh. and one good rap. And the reason I'm having you here is that you're going to be on the panel. Yeah! <laughs> The legendary on the panel, and this is coming for We Kibera. are gonna vet you exactly. We and will do full the artists have to come from Kibera, yeah. And uh, also, <coughs> social change, social vetting. change has to we be. Will, we will, we will judge you by that, considering all your lyrics. Uh, it will not even be about the gender. I know the girls will pull it in. Mm. We have a lot of dope uh, girls from Kibera who can do it. So what we're going to do mm -hmm. is uh, for these two artists, one, we're going to support them to do a very professional, high class uh, audio and video. Yes. Wow. And then... You lucky people. <laughs> These guys never had this coming up. They've never. And then they're gonna do one I song. I never saw it coming up. Yeah. They're gonna be creative and do one song for Victors with Victor. Yeah. That will be having playing at Victors with Victor's YouTube channel. But Morocco, I, I think of my interest is, um, I mean, with all those tours. Yes. What was, what was, and forgive me for asking this, but for the sake of the next generation, yeah. what was the monetary value of your tours? Monetary value, um, I saved up. How were you appreciated for the tour? Yeah, we were paid uh, very nice, but uh, you know, sometimes you have to save. So that's why even where the house that I live in now, when I came back, I, I bought the house and uh, I bought uh, equipment for doing uh, outdoor sound uh, speaker services mm -hmm. and we bought a tent that we could be hiring out because uh, music was our passion with me and my brother. So I invested with the money that I got from there and uh, I can say people actually appreciate uh, be it the country as long as it's from outside Kenya and uh, when you're being called for a European show or, mm -hmm. or abroad. They actually re respect uh, and uh, appreciate you, even if they don't know you. They appreciate art, that's so true. So don't have low self-esteem if you have songs on your YouTube and uh, your subscribers are not like how you wish. Right now there's social media pressure, there's TikTok, there's things like that. So you're looking at your TikTok followers and your TikTok views and you're like, ah, I cannot make it. I'm a B-boy, I'm a break dancer, but I only mm. have 500 subscribers. Mm. Don't be, don't make it emotional. You don't know why um, you have do those uh, many subscribers and it's not about just trending, it's about you can trend for a week but you can never trend for your life. Mm, service for think the people. About, yeah, think about like the people who love you, your neighbors who want to watch you. Mm. What did he do today? What did Victors with the Victor post today? What would the Morocco Kalari mm. do today? Don't go out of the extremes just to mm. trend. Let's move a little bit. Yeah, don't do, mm. don't, uh, don't be, don't be absorbed by something called uh, social media. Don't be the naked yes, artist. Uh, right now you can have only 100 views in two weeks. And uh, because people don't know you, you are depressed and you stop doing what you're doing, stop mm. break dancing, continue, mm. continue, continue. Even people like Go Pato, Go Pato, he came to trend in Kenya after 25 years after he released the song. Kenya makes people's trends. Yeah, so. so don't beat yourself about it and make sure anything you're doing, mm. you're doing for you and you're doing for the purpose of the cause. Right. Can I repeat that? You're doing for the purpose of the the cause 
and the cause will be for social change you know mm -hmm. uh, anything else anything mm. else that you put upon yourself mm. it's a corner story is a job explain that we've bro. seen um uh, we've seen people um push themselves because of that uh, social media pressure pressure, yeah, pressure mm -hmm. at you oh, you're not a good break bo break bo break, break, break boy dancer. break dancer mm -hmm. you only have 300 subscribers mm -hmm. on your channel and mm -hmm. then you you put it here but look at those small comments that people tell you yeah nice one nice one nice one focus on those once you focus on those is when you discover you, everybody is special and you yourself god is not god is not is not biased and god's timing is the best if he chose you to do it do it but just remember that ah man <laughs> So this uh, prophet Morocco is speaking actually. He's speaking yes. on behalf of my subscribers. I've been receiving love, bro. Yes. Uh, locally, not as much, but internationally, yeah. I think you'll watch this Even video. Even the Bible see. says most prophets are not worshipped, are not followed at home. So kings are not celebrated at their Don't home. beat yourself about it. Mm. Victors with Victor is here for you. You already know. Yeah, you can comment on there. Talk to Victor if you're so, a break dancer. Talk to him. So Morocco. start approaching him and uh, make sure these things by the time the competition is on, at least we know about you and you know here is very blessed people and people who are brought on this earth to make a change not to make a make a this change yes. what do you think is the problem to the creative uh a creative world change here in kibera and in our community uh people i think are judging each other because of their backgrounds they, 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 they forget you can sip your water yeah it's okay they they come forgetting that yeah, I'm just staying away from uh, the product they, placement. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they for, forget that um, all of us are from Kibera mm. and we start cate categorizing each other. You're from downtown Kibera, you're from uptown Kibera, you mm. guys are richer than us. Mm. We're still Kibera. Mm. We voted for the same MP. We voted uh, for different years. The same years. Road. Uh, maybe went to the same primary school. Don't start categorizing and profiling each other, considering all of you are Kibera artists. Mm. And uh, please, some people I know they run into huge capital or huge investments or people ready to sponsor them. But because they are from a certain part of Kibera, mm. they think that it is fit. They only people from that certain part of Kibera to benefit from the package or the airdrop that they get mm. or things like that. That is nonsense and that is profiling yourself inside within your family. It's like you're starting to say you have two brothers and two sisters so you and two brothers are light skinned and two sisters are dark skinned and you start categorizing them but they're all your brothers and sisters from the same womb of your mom. Mm. You you we, we, we cannot profile ourselves inside our own neighborhood once you start profiling and categorizing others like our oh, metoka side you in saba you from the west side mm. kibira you're from east side kibira that shows that it's divide and rule we cannot divide and rule at this point this is 2024 and we should be more mature and just put everything aside financial backgrounds family backgrounds neighborhood backgrounds the only thing that can make us together is our id it will show you are from kibira so there's no uptown kibira no downtown kibira mm. and once we start to look at it that way we can be more an alliance than a, 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 than a so fight. you're demystifying the say that charity begins at home yeah, yeah. yeah charity <laughs> but you're also justifying the say that uh kings are crowned are not crowned in their home yes <laughs> i don't get it but anyway no 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 you get it <laughs> I'm trying to mix up with this guy. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we got it. As an individual, <laughs> as an individual, I think a, a bishop, a, a prophet, is not worshipped at all. Yeah, but uh, as a group, uh, <laughs> let's remember each other. Okay, okay this so is Kenya, and it's evident from Lupita's story. I told you guys, yeah. like Lupita always said, yeah, you where you come from does not decide your destiny. Yes. I can't remember the exact say, but that is what it means. It's starting to drizzle here, which is beautiful. I don't run away from the rain. I hope you don't too. Ah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> we ask for it, then we run away from yeah, it. It's so Morocco, yes. uh, um, if you were talking to a young Morocco out there, having done those tours, your investment and everything, what is it that you would have done differently? Um, uh, to the younger Morocco, 
I think I would have saved more. Mm. Where and, do you uh, feel like your money went to? Yeah, my money went to like uh, investing in uh, my homestead and uh, like uh, housing for where I live. Mm. But uh, for the younger Morocco, I think I would have just uh, when you travel, you are very excited because uh, you are performing mm -hmm. and you are working with people you have already met. I know this. But once you are there, please try um, networking. Networking will be a very big key if you travel outside. You your find, network determines your net worth. Yeah, your network determines your net worth. And um, nonetheless or nevertheless, the network that you had that made you reach there, it's already your network. Mm. Find new networks. Make the spider web a grapevine. Mm. Or make the grapevine a spider web. Whichever which you can start from. Mm. Don't just... Uh, don't be don't be don't be a square don't stay in a, at your comfort yeah don't be a square or a triangle be a circle you know um the, I, I, if i could have made my circles larger while i was there and networked worked more while i was there i think i would have been uh, you know a few steps ahead of where which I am is right one now. of the things i did while uh, traveling yes it is not a regret but it is an observation that uh, I, I, I i i have learned uh, physically mm -hmm. And once you create a bridge, protect it like your child. Make sure in your life, never burn a bridge. Because you got across with it and it trusted you. Now you burnt it, how will you get back? Karma is a bay, yeah? baby. Yeah, so I'm not saying that I burned any bridges, mm -hmm. but I regret not making a lot of networks. Okay. Yes. So networks is key. <clears throat> Network is key. Yes. As you do that, also remember to make money. Or remember to have money. Yeah, work with merchandise. Always try to merchandise yourself. Right now I know it's the era is not CDs. Now it's flash discs. But if you're going somewhere far from home, just make sure you merchandise. I have your match small merchandises. So what is like money? Like if you're B boy Vic, Vic, Vic. Yeah. What Vic is money Mandana. for you? Yeah, uh, what? What is money for you? What is money for me? Yeah. What is your understanding of money? Money is my fuel through the journey. Mm -hmm. But I cannot say it, uh, it, determines, it determines my, 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 my destiny. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been very many situations where I did not have money. And what uh, was uh, needed of me, needed money. Mm. But it still came along. Oh yeah, because I focused on the main goal. Right. People can tell you, yeah, money will come later. No, money does not grow from trees. But there's the power of positive thinking mm. and the power of prayer. Mm. Money eventually comes up. Yeah. You cannot just build a house from the roof. You have to have the foundation. It's the energy you radiate. Money is not your foundation. Money is your cement. Your foundation is you yourself and the power. As of a thinking. person, your personality is key. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah. But money also, is just your cement. It's mm. your it's, it's your adhesive that keeps your life together mm. because you you have to eat. You have to finance your resources mm. and other things. But at the end of the day, money should not be paramount for you. Mm. What should be paramount for you is your networks and your, and, your, and, your, and your goals. Right. That is the only way you can get from the gutter and sure. become a rose that can rise from concrete. So, Morocco, mm -hmm. um, what you do sort of say, um, I, I, don't, I don't really want to get into the money you were paid in the uh, EU, mm -hmm. which is the European Union tour that you did. Mm -hmm. But if you got that money today, what would be the order of your priority as a creative? I would invest in like more content mm. to produce so that I can I can monetize from that. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely invest in uh, my, my neighborhood and my family, mm -hmm. like small businesses. Because there are many people around you who can depend on you to capitalize on them. Right. You can trust them and the, your money will multiply. Mm. You cannot invest outside, invest in your, in, in your area. That's how money circulates. And uh, what I can say, if it came out through around this time, it would have been still a tough budget, but always, if you got the money from your content that you had created, mm. invest in more content so that you create Build more it. of that. Build it, yeah. Yes, invest uh, in your in your invest in your consistency. Mm. 
Uh, I think I've used it uh, nice. Right. You can invest in your so, consistency. So what I, how I explain that is, if you grow one avocado tree and it gives you twenty avocados, avocados. Yeah, you can use those seedlings to plant, to plant more, more avocado, avocado trees and fertilize the money. Right. To fertilize those trees. I'm also gonna share Morocco's link on bio. He has a YouTube channel, Morocco yes. Kalahari, right? M-O-R-O-K-O, -O, Kalahari like the desert. Yeah, you can check out his music and it'll also be on the panel. Um, I hope to see Morocco do a lot more. Uh, I'm not promising, but I also hope to support. Hey, like you guys are supporting so I appreciate bro I appreciate and uh, I really appreciate that now your dad I mean you're one of the people that I was always looking up to when I wanted to be a rap and then I stopped because you guys were dapper <laughs> these guys were dapper than I was but yeah. now a b-boy I mean we're creating social change in the community but even if in you see your name you're a victor already you're I appreciate man I appreciate yeah. that coming from a legend means a lot to me you know yeah. being crowned by a legend who's already been crowned so um we can't wait to see new cha talent uh, coming up uh, courtesy of b-boys uh, b-boy victor, B -Vic, yes. victor. Uh -huh. and uh we can't wait for new talent we'll be on the panel we'll, we'll but to be honest we'll i think, you guys, I we'll think of my interest morocco and the reason bring your, bring, bring your a game yeah Make sure you do what you do of my interest and the reason why i'm asking you about it is to teach young people how to invest and use money uh -huh. and how to look at money because yes. we live in a society where people think money is evil money has never been evil will never be it will never Some be people evil don't understand the discipline and uh, one of the fundamentals of money is uh, brackets of the yeah, region. Mm. Brackets of division multiplication addition and subtraction right so when you look at it uh, your life from there just know where you will keep your brackets mm -hmm. where you should divide mm -hmm. where you should multiply mm -hmm. what you should add mm -hmm. and what you should subtract right all those those are the key fundamentals of looking at money from mm. once you understand it from that point you can become a very good economist mm. and remember you should be proud to be a kenyan because we are the eighth strongest economy in africa eighth strongest and we're going up i hope so so as we finalize, Amila, as we mambo, Niko po has seen a story where Salamia baby girl. So as we finalize, also uh, remember we were doing the 12th village, and this is Ayani. Yes. So the door is one of the Christian um, worship places, the yeah. biggest actually in Ayani village. Yeah. We had shown you guys the mosque. We showed you the gym. We showed you the restaurant. And uh, now we're showing you the church, and I've been hanging out with the legendary himself, Morocco Kalihari. Welcome, Bro, guys. I appreciate and celebrate you. I look forward to what this will yeah, turn into. Yeah, looking forward to Yeah. And uh, let's see. I think of the best thing that I'm doing to myself, I think, is telling young people, the new generation dancers, the mistakes that I made so they don't repeat it. And so I'm hoping that we'll be strong enough, confident enough to talk to the young people about the mistakes. Or rather, what I'd call them is, are the lessons that we got that they can also yeah. take from And us. also another thing, um, talking with these guys is easy, but what is uh, hard is uh, if they listen. I think as a prophet, as a prophet, your work is to reach the message. As a messenger, Make sure the message gets there. Whoever yeah, yeah. chooses to take it, that's on them. Yeah, if that they don't choose to take sense. it, that's on them. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. You get it? Yeah. Don't burden yourself to whatever they are going to take. Knock it. on the door. Yeah, knock on the door. <laughs> and it shall knock be open. Knock on the door. Open. It shall be open. <laughs> <laughs> so as we close, there's a friend of mine here. Yeah. Very hardworking, Mr. Nice. Yeah. This guy was my neighbor in the slums. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yeah. so we live together in Kianda slums. Okay. Yeah, so right now, what are you doing? I'm just uh, trying to play with firewood. Oh, he's splitting firewood. He has some of the best fish in Ayani area. He sells the best fried fish yeah. Yeah. from the lake. You're from the lake side, yeah? Yeah, Victoria. Lake Victoria. Yes, yeah. From Lake Victoria. Wow. With Victor with Victor. Victor with Victor with the Victoria. <laughs> so cheers. Thank okay, you, Mr. Nice. Yeah. Good to see you, bro. Yeah.
Poa sana. So we're gonna close this video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Morocco Kalahari. You're welcome, guys. Yeah. So it's if you're new here, time. remember the 12th village. Two more to go. We're getting the history from the very wise, the dopest, and the dopest. Yeah. So as we close this video, I really celebrate and appreciate you. I hope you got everything nice and clear, and I hope you're enjoying this episode of Villages of Kibera. Kids are just coming from school right now. It's a beautiful uh, afternoon and I really appreciate and celebrate you guys. Victors with Victors. Adios! Yeah. <laughs>